Holy Spirit gives me to speak, and may you friends hear the words the Holy Spirit gives you to hear in the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So this morning, we're not going to talk about the gospel or the scriptures. I bet you can guess that, right? We are going to talk about the election. We need to talk about the election. Um, and it's, this is, it's a struggle to know what to say. It was a struggle to write this sermon. But not from an information viewpoint. You don't need information from me because you can Google election response or election results and you will get a mound of information to read. Read to your heart's content. The same is actually kind of true about spiritual response to the election. You can Google spiritual response to the election and there it all is, including, as I said before, statements from our presiding bishop and other spiritual leaders, as well as workshops and meetings and things you can go to to process and, and figure it out. So there's too much actually to share in those two areas, both informational response and not in our short time, unless you wanna, if you're game, <laughs> but there's too much to share in our short time together in either of those areas, either in the area of spiritual response or in the area of informational response. So um, I hope you'll forgive me for not attempting to share all of that. Rather, there's our own path, our own path forward. Our path and our path forward. So this is a very practical sermon. I'm, I'm going to orient us towards our response to the election um, as, as the people of God, not in the spiritual sense, although it's connected, but in a practical sense, what do we do now? In any situation like this, like this one. The first question that we need to ask, the first question for a lot of us is, how do I feel about this? I have certainly heard a lot of feelings, read a lot of feelings, seen a lot of feelings acted out in the last few days. Many of us don't have to ask that because we know instantly how we feel in any situation. And I will say, we ignore that question to our peril. We must feel what we feel. It, it's hard for me to write about that because I don't lead with feelings. So they're not what's on my mind first. But if we don't stop, express, process, grieve, think about our feelings, they will ferment. Feelings will have their way. They will ferment. In our theology, when we're in our darkest moments, we are encouraged to feel our feelings completely and fully. Knowing that's not where we stay. In our funeral rite, we say, we are a people of hope and we make our song even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. But that is not a message to move on, especially not move on too soon. That is not a message to stuff our feelings. It's a message that says what Robert Frost so famously said, the best way out is through. The best way out is through, because we do feel what we feel. 
It's an important question. What do I feel in this moment? It is important to explore our feelings about this election. In this time, we should lament. If our hearts are heavy, we should lament. We should fully experience our discouragement, our anger, our sorrow. Where we have that, we need to feel that. Jeremiah 31, 15 says, Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be consoled for her children because they are no more. Be like Rachel. If that is your heart today, be there. Be like Rachel. It's important in this time to create sacred, sacred space for yourself and for people close to you, to create a safe circle for yourself as you feel your strong feelings. Gather with like-minded friends, or settle down at home if that is what you do. Weep, rage, blame somebody, journal, go for a walk, rant. There are important things to be done. Then rest, then repeat. And always, always offer grace to each other and to yourself. If you are grieving in this moment, care for yourself as you would a mother who has lost her children. And take your broken heart to Jesus. Pray to Jesus in your sorrow. Boldly tell him what you're feeling and what you wished for that is now lost. Take your sorrow, fear, grief, anger, even anger at God, and lay it at God's feet. It's okay to give God what for. It's okay to do that. Spend time with the Holy One in your sacred space. Jesus is with us in this suffering moment, and we can draw close and trust in him. He suffered too. He came to earth because of the suffering we all have and the suffering we inflict on each other. Trust him. It's an important time to do this work of the heart, together and in solitude, and we should plan for this work to take longer than we expect. Grief often takes longer than we expect, so give yourself time. Most of us have grieved. And we know that grief comes in waves. We can't get to be as old as we are without having had grief in our lives. And what we know is that grief comes in waves. As those first waves recede, we will enter a time when we can turn to a new question. After, how do I feel? What do I think about all this? What do I think about all this? What is there to learn in this moment? This is a time to get curious, to investigate, to explore nuances. I can tell you that judging others won't help you in this moment. Judging is for the lament part. Now, in learning, it will not help. It's a dead end. Raging against people is a technique of lament not thinking. Do it when you're feeling and then let it go so you can learn. At the learning stage, instead of blaming each other or even ourselves, we need to seek understanding. Instead of establishing that we are right, we need to be curious. There are many questions to ask. What do people who disagree with us really, really want? What do they think? Alternatively, what did our ancestors do in times such as these? We need to think critically about this time in history, analyze and hypothesize. What does history say about moments like this? Because there have been many. Like the demons and the Gerasene men, they are legion. Our ancestors are with us now as we suffer and search and learn, and they know this path. 
It's not a new one. We need to listen, even to those who differ from us. We will encounter puzzles in people and events, and we need to learn how to solve them. We need to seek not right answers, but greater insight in this moment. We need wisdom. Not just information, but wisdom to face the time ahead. Psalm 51, 6 says, You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Wisdom comes from God. Proverbs 2, 1 through 15 addresses this. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart, to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, then you will understand the law, the awe of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity and every good path, for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. And wisdom, once gained, will inevitably lead us to action. Our question then will become, what will I do? There will be many, many opportunities to act in the months to come. The Holy Spirit will call us to this. For we are the people of God, a light in the world, walking in the way of love. We may find that we are called to new action, something we've never done before that never would have occurred to us, to use new gifts that we never realized we had. The Holy Spirit's like that. Just expect it. The Gospel of John says, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Our feelings, our wisdom, our action, these are what we are called to in this moment. Each of us does one of these things better than we do the others. We feel or think or do better in one area than in the others. It'll be a challenge to hone the area we are weak in and not reside only in our strength. Do you immediately have strong feelings about any situation? Then you will have to be careful to seek wisdom, not get mired in your feelings, and from that wisdom act. Do you immediately want to know all the information and plan and hear all there is to know before you make a decision, then you will need to move into action, perhaps before you are ready. Do you automatically respond in any situation, in any crisis, you're right off the mark, ready to act for that situation? Then you will need to sit with your feelings. Wherever you are strong, you will need to go to your weakest point and sit there and be there. Each of us has undiscovered treasure in it, inside us. It's, this is an opportunity to explore that. What it comes down to is hope and trust in God. This time is uncertain, but some things we do know for sure. We know that we are not alone, but rather that in all we do, so we are supported by Christians on earth and in heaven. We know that God is the creator, the redeemer, the sustainer. We know that God is good. We know God's purpose. We know God is love. Revelation 21, three through five says, see, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. 
Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. God is making all things new. And his people are being renewed in feeling, in wisdom, and in action. Jesus spoke truth to power. He cared for the least of these, the most vulnerable among them. He taught how to live with word and action. And most of all, Jesus was present. He calls us to do the same. It's why the Creator made us. We are empowered in that life by the Holy Spirit. Our life with the Trinity sustains us, prepares us, and calls us in this hour. I want to leave you with a beautiful quote from L.R. Nost. I received it yesterday, just yesterday, from Barbara Heckard. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bringers, those extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives who quietly weave threads of humanity into an inhumane world. They are the unsung heroes in a world at war with itself. They are the whisperers of hope that peace is possible. Look for them in this present darkness. Light your candle with their flame. And then go build bridges, hold hands, bring light to a dark and desperate world. Be the hero you are looking for. Peace is possible. It begins with us.